morning, a public affairs analyst as well. Joining us on the program this morning is Comrade Richard Romanus. Good morning to you. Good morning, Bito. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, we do hope to also have Dr. Alihu Elias join us virtually this morning to also give us economic perspectives into questions over the pricing of PMS. But now in terms of the angle of the federal government having issued a refutal, we saw yesterday visit to NNPCL's filling stations and reported this morning on the newspaper the new price between 897 and 1,000 naira per litre. Uh, Nigerians are worried over this development. It, it seems to have come just in the same frame of time when Dangote Refineries is promising Nigerians that would have fuel from our refinery in the local Nigerian market. Uh, let's get your thoughts on this. Sincerely, um, Bito, I have been very sad since yesterday. Um, Nigerians have been... Nigerians have already been going through a lot. And yesterday's... Um, uh, Yesterday's um, uh, uh, what, what should I announcement. Call it? announcement, you know, has further, you know, thrown, thrown Nigerians into um, a pitiable situation. You know, while I was driving here, uh, I saw all manner of all manner of um, queues, long queues, you know, from from where I was to from my house to the studio. You know, and for me, this is even happening at a time where the president, our president, is in um, is in China. China. You know, uh, sincerely, something should be done. So, something should urgently be done. Nigeria, this country is sitting on a time bomb already. It's sitting on the time bomb. Nigerians are suffering. Nigerians are suffering. Just a few weeks ago, we had at the end of hunger protest. Where I hear some up to these days, some people are still under detention, you know, because of their role in that protest. Where we are going to, the way we are right now, if anything happens that would result in protest, I don't think the prisons, I don't think the detention cells will be enough for people. Now, because that means they will definitely arrest everybody. Now, quite importantly, the NLC was quite about their involvement in the protest the last time. But this time around, in, in order to forestall a breakdown in order, much like you're projecting, the NLC is calling for an outright reversal of not just the pump price of fuel, but also the electricity hike. Bito, I wouldn't want to um, say much about the NLC. I am disappointed with the NLC. Yeah, I'm disappointed with the NLC. A whole lot of Nigerians, I am sure, have also lost in, lost confidence in the NLC. That is the truth. You know? Why so? I mean, uh, the issues, the issues that were brought to the fore, that were brought to the table, were they resolved? When they initially threatened strike action, and they talked about, um, uh, I think it was minimum wage then. Was it only minimum wage? There were CNG bosses, CNG bosses in that conversation as well. Good. There were other issues, but the moment they got uh, minimum wage, did we hear any other thing from them? They went back home now. So why should I take them serious now? Now it's also very compromising at a time when the NLC has also been tied to leasing out its office to a man who is now named as a prime suspect in what. The police is calling treasonable felony, who was said to have been inhabiting that apartment. Well, um, like I said, I wouldn't want to delve into that matter because first, I, I think it was um, one of your sister, one of your station, one of um, uh, one of these stations, um, these channels. I watched the man trying to give his perspective, you know, and even offering himself that he was even ready to come back to Nigeria to answer um, answer to some of these um, questions. And I also got to find out that the man has been living in Nigeria for for quite some time, you know, and is even married to a married to a Nigerian, you know. But be that as it may, I would rather want to be silent to see where that leads us. Where the investigation would lead us. Yeah. Now, uh, let's look at two papers that gave us some projections as to this issue with the pricing. 
Now, the Nation and the Matrix newspaper also took out time to list some of the highlights of Dangote's involvement. On the Nation, it was looking to give an explanation. It says why NNPCL filling stations adjusted prices by experts. Now, the Matrix took out time to itemize some of the highlights of Dangote's refinery coming on board to include commendations coming in from uh, billionaire business mogul Femi Otedola, who is a good friend of Aliko Dangote. Now, if you look at some of these highlights, it's on the 30 million liters of petrol supply daily in October. October is just but a few weeks away. But uh, the comments from Otedola says, you dealt a blow to the cabals. Where? Now, do you think these cabals are still part of the persons who have taken a step further to influence the price that we're currently seeing being hiked? Well, um, I, I, I think that I, I think I want to agree with um, Femi Otedola. You know, um, uh, just recently, a video clip where, where Dangote was talking about the cabal, you know, in the oil sector. You know, and um, uh, the, I know, I remember the interviewer asked him if he was more afraid of the oil, the cabal in the oil se sector in the, than the oil. He said, yes, that's the truth. He said, the cabal in the oil sector is so strong and all of that. And sincerely, I want to believe, I want to believe, I want to believe that, you know. And, I mean, I mean why is all of this thing coming all of a sudden? Just yesterday, we saw pictures of um, uh, the new uh, set of uh, trucks, you know, driving into the Dangote refinery for the first um, uh, part of the loading or something, yes. you know. It is just that same yesterday that we had or we hear of um, price adjustment by the NNPC. I mean, I just think that there must be something wrong somewhere. There must be something fishy somewhere. Now, the other point that was raised by the Matrix is on the quality. Dangote also appeared in the press conference with a sample of the PMS, and people noted that it was quite clear, almost looked like water. And uh, persons are saying that this quality would also help the car engines in Nigerians to last longer. I remember when he had a similar issue on quality control with his diesel. It was tested and found out to be one of the best diesels in the world. What do you think this does for foreign interest in this product that Nigerians are already anticipating? Again, again, um, what Dangote? Dangote for, for us, or for me, should be protected by all of us. You know, um, what he's doing for us is absolutely not what the foreign interest you know would have wanted you know but this is happening you know i remember him talking about giving uh, a very deep analysis about uh, diesel you know how the diesel you know his diesel is quite different from what we've been having in the country or yeah in the country over time you know and how uh, most of the products from, from the from his recording in progress from his refinery you know, is going to ensure um, our vehicles um, uh, uh, um, uh, this engine, durability. engine durability, you know. So for me, Dangote needs to be protected by all of us, you know, by Nigerians. You know, uh, it is time for us to consume Nigeria. It is time for us to support Dangote. For, for God's sake, it's our own. Now, there's another interesting angle. Nigeria had always looked to answer the question of how much petrol do we consume daily? Dangote is now talking about a tracker to reveal Nigeria's accurate fuel consumption patterns. And many are still worried that this might not sit well with some persons who are enjoying the loopholes in the system currently. Uh, do you think that uh, he would be set to face even more persecution at this time if he's to achieve this transparency as we wish for it well given a given an opportunity i will advise dangote to take one thing at a time you know let him ensure there's fuel first. Well first before talking about tracking the, the, the consumption the consumption rate now quite interestingly this is some of the highlight features we're looking at this morning and in terms of the rollout in 48 hours as promised by dangote refinery dangote has also made a comment that most nigerians are questioning as to the price fixing, he said that the price of PMS particularly would be pegged by the Federal Executive Council FEC. Now, and we're hoping that we can have uh, Dr. Aliu Elias to give us economic perspectives 
as to the price fixing issues concerning this. But in the meantime, whilst our doctor looks to join us, we'll look at the Daily News Hub again and the Nigerian News Direct because it's one of the papers this morning that kind of ties the current hike in PMS to the rollout from Dangote refineries. On the Daily News Hub, as we earlier looked at, let's look at it again together this morning. You'd find it. It says, NNPCL adjusts pump price to 800 Naira as Dangote refinery begins local fuel production. Our petrol would be available at filling stations in 48 hours. Dangote assures refinery will supply 25 million liters of petrol daily in September, says NMDPR. Now, on the Nigerian News Direct, you'd find backlash as NNPC Limited jacks up PMS pump price to 897 naira per liter. Now, before we take more comments on the show, let's just bring you a brief report from our correspondent in Enugu, who took a survey of the current price of fuel in filling stations and filed in this report. Take a listen. The recent nationwide increase in the price of premium motor spirit PMS has led to noticeable shortage across many states. However, Enugu State has largely avoided significant disruptions, with most filling stations remaining operational and selling fuel at 9.15 Naira per litre. In a notable exception, the 9 pieces mega station in Enugu initially sold fuel at 6.50 per litre on Monday. However, the station raised its price to 8.15 Naira per litre on Tuesday, creating a 100 Naira discrepancy compared to other filling stations in the city. Despite the price hike at an NMPC station, normal business activities in Enugu has continued smoothly, with no significant queues reported at most filling stations. The increased demand at NMPC station appears to be the direct result of price difference. Well, as the situation in Enugu has reported, I'm very sure and certain that this might be the situation across all the major cities in Nigeria. But to get economic perspectives, we're now joined by Dr. Alihu Elias, virtually who joins us from the nation's capital, Abuja. Hello, doctor. Good morning to you. Welcome to the program. Good morning and thank you for having me. Now, Doctor, this situation is one that you had projected last week on the program and you were calling for concerted efforts in the handling of the current situation owing to the lingering fuel scarcity. This morning, we're seeing the Nigerian Labour Congress leading calls for a reversal and many persons are tiny to the activities of some persons who might not be too happy with the expected rollout of fuel in the Nigerian market from Dangote Refinery. Let's get your thoughts on this development. Right. I think uh, it's quite uh, sad that we have two things that happen at the same time. Uh, when Dangote is saying that it's going to uh, roll out its uh, uh, fuel, the same time federal government uh, uh, led by NNPC increased that fuel uh, from price. Now, it simply shows that there's a relationship between what Dangote did and the NNPC uh, reaction. It's quite clear because I have to engage some marketers. And when I engage some marketers, they told me, that 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 cannot send it down to 200 to Nigeria. And that's why Dangote now said he's going to sell to NNPC. NNPC will now sell to Nigeria. So if we allow Dangote to sell, Dangote is going to sell to Why Nigeria did got to uh, afford that? But now he's saying that he's waiting for fake approval to roll out. I don't know where a businessman will now, for instance, I actually really House. And now it's, it's about time to sell the car. And I'm waiting for federal government to allow me to sell the car. I don't know how that actually correlates uh, in business time. So that is uh, the fact the federal government is to sell the, the fuel. That's a, a serious uh, problem. Like we all have been saying, and it's open to make profit. The major area is. And that's why we call on federal government that there is no way a private refinery will be satisfied in Nigeria like having our own refinery working. Two refineries in Port one in Wari, one in Kaduna, if they had worked. Because now, Dan, recall, you recall that Dangote did not even incur any transport importation. 
and Dangote did not have any reason for foreign uh, exchange in transportation. But now he's, he's saying that he's waiting for the federal government. So I think government needs to also, also NNPC, so to say, also said that the queue that we are seeing is the function of the of six billion dollars that they have made. So it is a serious issue in this all sector. And I must remind, re, re, remind the federal government that any country that does not have energy security will not come, and season will not be an okay opportunity to power. Now, Doctor, you cited two things that are of concern, and I'm very sure Nigerians want to understand. You have made it clear that in business terms, it does not really make sense for a businessman to wait for FEC to determine the prices of goods in his shop. Now, particularly, it's on the stakeholder interest and shares in Dangote Refinery, which has brought about the questions on the ownership of the refinery as well. Do you have questions with this decision in terms of the ownership and percentages in Dangote's interest in this regard? Well, you the point. He said the share of the was reduced to the percent, which up to now we don't have the understanding of how many percent in Nigeria is happening. You also recall that Dangote is on free trade zone. Is on free trade zone. So when you're on free trade zone, sometimes you want to say you are in America in Nigeria, right? So free trade zone is where is is a place that is has to be conditionalities. So if a tank All right, Doctor, we'll come back to you in a bit. We're having a slight glitch in your connection, but once that clears up, we'll come back to get your thoughts as well. Let's come back to the studio and uh, engage more on the perspectives of uh, Comrade Richard Romanus to other issues in the news. Now, and we'll come back to get more perspectives on the projections in terms of litres per day. But earlier on, as reported by the New Telegraph and the Nigerian Tribune, is a political story of interest. And once Nigerians demand for the delivery of good governance, the common phrase is that the time for politicking is over. Now is the time for governance. But with 2027 right around the corner, the People's Democratic Party have had issues to pick bones with uh, the FCT minister, Barista Nyeson Wike, and he's been in the news quite frequently for comments made that haven't sat well with the parties. Yes, he is in embrace with the romance of uh, the opposition party having picked up a ministerial position on appointment by President Bola Metinibu. But on the Nigerian Telegraph and the Nigerian Tribune this morning, it's the story with the catchphrase, fire threats, that is asking the PDP governors to extend an invitation to Barristan Yeson Wiki and also wants the security agencies to be a part of it as well. Now, an earlier reported on the Nigerian Tribune and the New Telegraph, you'd find that story on the rider and header respectively. Fire threats. Invite Wiki for questioning. PDP governors tell security agencies. And above the masthead on the Nigerian Tribune, it reads, PDP governors blast Wiki over irresponsible threats. Now, now, coverage Richard Romanus. It almost feels as though this year, for every single quarter, there has been a big issue in the news, either commending his work in the FCT or tying him to issues in River State and back to the party PDP as well. What seems to be the issue in your perspective concerning the PDP and the position of the FCT minister in his handling of affairs, both at his state level and in his office of appointment? Okay, first and foremost, First and foremost, um, I think there is need for us to go back memory lane from when all of this PDP crisis started. <laughs> you know, the PDP as a party today, I'm very surprised the party is still not learning anything. You say in yes and week is not is not um is inconsequential. You say all manner of stuff. But the moment he sneezes, everybody is talking about him. He goes to tell you that the man still has grip on the party. Now, 
why is Nelson Wike acting the way he's acting? During the 2023, 2022, yeah, 2023 um, uh, PDP primaries, what happened? The so acclaimed owners of the PDP who thought that Nelson Wike was having too much um, influence on the party made an attempt to snatch the party from him. And they were in a hurry to do so. On the primaries ground, that was when they got Senator, the then governor of um, Sokoto, now Senator uh, Amino Tambua, to step down for to step down for Alaji Atiku Abubakar, who eventually became the PDP presidential uh, candidate. candidate. You know, and I tell you the truth, without Amino Tambua, I doubt if Atiku Abubakar would have emerged winner of that primaries because. Nyeso Wike was already matching them with everything he's got. Now, after that primary and Atiku emerged winner, the national chairman, who is supposed to be a father to all, the next day, the following day, was seen in Amin Utambua's house, calling him what? Calling him the... the there's, there's, there's a word he used. You know, in addressing Amin Tamba, is he the savior of the the hero of the primaries? Why was he the hero of the primaries? A primaries in which he had to step down for. He was in the he was the hero of the primaries because he had to step down for Atika Abubakar, which automatically means that even the national chairman was in support, was in clandestine support of an alleged yeah. Atika Abubakar, and he was escorted in that visit by another um, man, the former governor of Jigawa, Sule Lamido. You know, now I am trying to say that these people, these people were in a hurry to take over this party from from Nelson Wike, who they thought had overbearing influence, you know, on the party. But and this was coming at a time when the G5 were very much a thing. Do you understand? Not even the G5 were not even there yet because I mean we were just leaving the we, they, they were just um, the primaries were just um, being uh, conducted, you know. So there was still time for engineering in the party. There was still time for the national chairman to lead from the front. I had thought that the first person the national chairman of that party was supposed to visit. The next day, after the primary, was in yes week eh? to tell him, I mean, you fought a good fight. You are, you are still a critical uh, stakeholder of this party and all of that. But what he rather did was to go and, was to go and um, call uh, Aminu Tambwa the hero of the night. You know. Now, I am taking you back memory lane just to tell you why yes week eh? is acting the way he's acting. And there are, of course, there are so many other issues. You know, there are so many other issues. Now, talking about the governors, the gov uh, the comments he made in um, in River State about the governors, the truth about it is, the truth about it is that in yes of wiki, whether they like it or not, the man, the man has too much grip on the party. When he says he is going to cause crisis in their state, it is the truth. Now, the, the perspective of the crisis in question now, do you think it's on the position of the governors within the party structure? That is where we, we're finding it like difficult to put in perspective. Is it in terms of the influence those governors have in the party structure for 2027 or in running the affairs of the state? Because River State has now been used as a case study for what the fire presumably now, might mean. Now, now, what the governors are saying is that Governor Sim Fubara should be given um, the right to be the leader of the party. At the state and, level. And, and according to them, that has always been the norm. And even him, Nyeso Wike, you know, benefited from all of that, you know. But then again, there has been crisis between the governor and the minister in the state over the soul of the party, you know which led to the minister threatening, the, threatening these governors. But I was trying to say that the governors, it is not enough to come to the, come to the media to say, oh, uh, uh, the, the minister is making, is making noise. Because so long as I am concerned, and from what I have been seeing, 
Yes, Owike has proven over time that he has what it takes to cause crisis in most of these states. I give you an example. In Plateau State, the governor of that state owes part of his electoral victory to Yes Owike. During before 2023, okay, yeah, while well, Yes Owike was going around campaigning for his presidential bid, he was the one who reconciled the former governor, Jonah Jang and General um, uh, General uh, Jeremiah Hosseini, who are very strong people in that state. As a matter of fact, it was the collaboration that eventually gave them victory in Plateau State. Don't forget that, that brought state, on board uh, that brought on board, Exactly. Don't forget that that state was originally an APC state. If you go to if you go to Enugu State, Enugu State is ruled by um, Governor Peter Mba. Peter Mbati today still has a very good relationship with the Emilia Pass governor, who is part of the G5. In Bauchi State, where Governor Balam Wame comes from, what is his relationship with um, the, former minister, the former Speaker of the House of, House of Representatives, um, uh, uh, Dogara? These are, these are very big forces in the, in, the, in the PDP that, whether you like it or not, Yes, on Wiki, if he wants to cause crisis, if you want to use some of these people to cause crisis in most of these things, he can. And uh, the other day, sorry, the other day when I was, while I was here, I told you that if there is one governor I like, it is Umoeno. Who is a PDP governor. Who is well. a PDP governor. But you hardly see him discuss politics. The man is no longer doing politics. The man is focused in governance. And he's also been cited as one of the governors who allows for autonomy of the local governments in the state. Do you understand? I tell you the truth. The last time I was there, I told you that if Moeno was the governor of River State, Moeno and Wike would have still been together till this day. Almost every weekend, the former governor of um, former governor of that state, Udom Emmanuel, is in River is in is, is in Akwaibo. It is to tell you the, the relationship that still exists between the, his successor and himself. And I tell you, this is how it should be. But six months after he took government, Fubara went, allowed himself to be influenced by God knows who, and look at where they are. Look at where we are in the, in the, in, 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 in River State. Now, in, in tying this to 2027 elections and the need to keep peace, to forestall this fire threats or whatever crisis in the states away from the party, how do you advise that the PDP gets its house in order in relation to the FCC minister, who is still going to be very much a part of the cabinet of President Bola Metinibu, and despite being in the PDP, um, I'm not too certain if he would want for the APC not to remain in power come 2027. So how does the PDP in River State and across board shape this relationship with a party stalwart and uh, his romance with the opposition? Well, right now, eh, right now, it's actually very, very difficult. If, if I, I don't even see that happening, especially in River State. You, you hear politicians say, all politics, all politics is local. You know, in yes, on Wiki, everything he's doing, he wants to protect his base. Because at the end of the day, every politician will be asked to fall back to your base. And as you're falling back to your base, you must bring something home. You know, most of these people who are now who are today interested in reverse politics, most of them are doing that for selfish reasons. Don't forget, River State has enormous amount of money. And we saw the role Rivers played in the last uh, presidential and election. We saw the role Rivers State played in the last presidential election. Now, I, I hear that uh, Dr. Aliu's connection is much better now. Let's revisit those two papers that informed our review of the situation in River State following the position of PDP governors who reportedly, by the New Telegraph newspaper, are inviting the security uh, agencies to invite the FCC Minister Barisan Yeson Wike over his remarks of putting fire in their states. Now, on the New Telegraph, you would find the picture of prominence as it concerns the field situation. The New Telegraph goes further to circle the 897 Naira prize, as we find the Nigerian Tribune also looking at uh, the outrage over the new ties temperate. Now, tied to that outrage, you'd find inserted just beneath the masthead some of the achievements that uh, Dangote hopes to influence in the downstream sector. Dangote lists gains as refinery finally rolls out petrol. Now, Dr. If you're with us, 
one of these gains is in terms of one of the what I call it initiatives of the government to make crude more affordable and strengthen the Naira. We hear that by 40%, the volatility of FX would be reduced as the federal government supplies Dangote crude in Naira. Uh, how much of this is a strong economic indicator for our exchange rates in the coming months if we can sustain a rollout of PMS from Dangote refinery? Right. I think uh, having Dangote uh, producing in Nigeria, it's a very good thing to happen to Nigeria because it has a lot of economic benefits. We want to help our uh, forex uh, volatility because when you have uh, people who come in Nigeria to actually buy from Dangote, that will strengthen the, the Naira uh, the more. Then uh, in terms of uh, selling crude oil in Naira and also selling back to Nigeria, you agree that because of that statement Dangote actually made that, is waiting for FEC to decide to sell crude oil. That simply means that they are going to sell to him in Naira, and he also is going to sell back to Nigeria uh, to NLPC uh, in Naira. That is not there is no contention that is going to help our economy because we need to industrialize the more. Because the more we industrialize, the more we have uh, uh, those power. Perhaps Dangote did not employ majorly foreigners. He employed Nigerians, so there is going to be multiplier effects on the Nigerian soil. And you know, it must have killed the transport system, uh, uh, transportation, that is importation of uh, uh, fuel. But the only thing we are fighting for as an economy is that why then would they not sell to marketers direct? Why are you selling to, if you said you want to really make sure you open the market, why are you not selling to the uh, marketer direct? Why should you sell to NPC, NPC will now sell to marketer? If not that there is a particular uh, profit uh, issues that is uh, there. But another thing is that you recall that the, uh, the NNPC cannot supply them with it throughout the year uh, for crude oil. I think they are going to do two among the uh, six supply that they need in a year. I'm not sure that they will supply them at all. I'm sure the one is using maybe the one is actually imported. So Nigeria must play their own role, making sure that they actually supply Dangote as and when due and supply him in era as promised. And we are glad that it's like there is another romance between Dangote and NPC, you know, because before we recall that there was an issue that you are selling, uh, you, your uh, product is not clean, one is clean, you know, now they are, are now settling to the extent that they now said they want to sell to the NPC. Well, the thing is, the at the end of the day, what we consumers, our Nigerians rather want to see, is to see that Nigeria are benefiting from the existence of Dangote in Nigeria. So if you cannot benefit from it, to um, to which and major we want to see is low price. Not that because that with is coming, price is now moving from uh, 617 NNPC to 895 and to about 1000 or 950, 930 for private uh, uh, marketers. So it's a serious issue that we need to look at. We must see the benefit. So now that we are also hoping that Nigerian refinery will come on board, are we saying it won't affect the price reduction? Because we are suffering two things now. We are suffering availability of PMS. We're also suffering the increase in PMS uh, price, which is a serious problem. So I think Nigeria should look at the short-term solution, medium-term solution, and long-term solution to bring succor uh, to Nigeria. Because if you, this little difference as an economist, I can tell you the uh, ripple effect that is going to have on the Nigerian populace. So that's if we are taking 500 naira as transportation, it took to like almost a thousand uh, naira. And you recall that this saying that we always say in, uh, in Nigeria, especially that when things go up, it hardly uh, come down. And now, doctor, let's picture the situation in the FCT because we also had a reporter do an analysis of the hike in transport. Now, from uh, the Garki area to Mararaba, which was largely between 500 and 700 before this price hike, yesterday saw commuters stranded with uh, most of the drivers asking for 1,000 naira for the same distance. And for distances within the central area, which was normally at 300 naira, we have now seen an increase of 500 naira. Now, there are projections that uh, this might even get worse if the prom price is not brought down before December. We're already in the Ember seasons, and with the festivities come, another hike in transport. What are your projections in this regards as well? Right. You, you, do, you cannot blame uh, a transporter because uh, a transporter also goes to the filling station to buy. 
and beyond buying, you also queue. You, you remember how many man hours is going to waste buying uh, the fuel. So I think we must stop uh, solving problem from the surface. You must go to the root of the problem. And what is the root of the problem? The problem is the cost of uh, buying the fuel and the man hour wasted. You told us earlier that there will be, you recall when President uh, Bola Metinuku said first subsidy is gone, perhaps even when President Mohamed Buhari was planning to remove first subsidy, he also said there will be CNG availability. I can tell you now, people are also queuing to buy CNG, which is surprising. You know, you are telling us to convert, but for us to also buy CNG, we also want to queue. I also went there to do my conversion. They told me that you have to wait for some months. And I went to a new one that they said, that only one told me point blank that they don't have materials, that they have, they, that should put down my phone uh, number, that they are going to contract me when it is available. You could see there is no sign of maybe commitment on the federal government part to make sure that they really, really bring suko or to increase Nigerian purchasing power. And now we are only talking about transport. Remember, it's going to translate to cost of uh, food in the market the school fee, you know, school are going to resume by Monday. The school fee uh, is going to increase. The transport to the school are going to increase. Rent are going to increase. So it has a lot of ripple effects. So when you are making some decisions, there is need for you to see, look at the fall out of it and also plan to mitigate the problem. So it's not uh, ideal. It's not a good thing for you to say, transport, you must bring down your price. No. Why not do your own side to make sure you reduce the cost of uh, purchasing uh, PMS? Now, another highlight of this is in terms of what it will entail in tracking the loopholes in our oil. Uh, Dangote is saying that uh, his supply would come with a tracker to monitor Nigeria's consumption patterns. Now, many had said we had lost a lot of revenue that should have accrued to the government's pocket because of the lack of will to monitor how much we export and how much we import. How essential and symbolic is this tracking of our daily consumption patterns? When, when, when you say track, tracking, I think that statement is vague. Then what they can tell us that you will know the amount of fuel uh, is given out. You can't you can track them. You know why? Dangote is a businessman and he wants to increase his profit. So if he's selling 10 trucks uh, and he still reason to sell 15 trucks, he just says, and you say, no, you can buy trucks. That's what you focus on this business. One of the arguments was that the Nigeria are consuming consuming in essence in essence that most of our fuel are going to across border. Now that they are open, that now we really see anything to benefit from those things. So I think that we should be conscious of his business, tracking if things are going out of Nigeria shore should not be his business. But if he said he wants to track, what they do want to on uh, transloading. What, what, what about transloading? I can take a particular truck to a particular filling station and transload in supply chain, what we call transloading, to another truck and I move it. What happens about that? So you should just be conscious of what he's saying, uh, selling, why governments are custom that will have to man the border to do their own role. I think Dangote should make sure that he focus on supplying Nigeria crude oil. I mean, PMAs. Now, uh, Doctor, before we let you go, one final question, because we're running out of time on your end as we are looking to let you go this morning. It's on the projections with the Nigerian Labour Congress looking to lend its voice to the plight of Nigerians. The NLC is calling for an outright reversal of the current PMS hike and the electricity tariff hike as well. And let's get your thoughts on that as we look to wrap up. Right. I listened to your uh, very uh, instructive guest when he was talking about NLC. He said he didn't want to come and talk about NLC. Uh, for me, I think NLC is doing the right thing. The only thing is that when you are doing the right thing in a wrong environment, it becomes a problem. You, you notice that the federal government are trying to stifle NLC. I can tell you uh, that, you know, from the issue of uh, the way they are harassing uh, them, they are not allowing them to say what they want to say. In terms of NLC coming out to actually say, for me, NLC should continue to strive for Nigerians because look at it now. You have increased salary to 70,000. And remember, that 70,000 has not kicked off yet. Recall, it has not kicked off. Now you are reducing, I mean, you are increasing price of PMS. Without you, reckon, 
that even the same money you are giving is going to uh, lose value. I can tell you that the increment is forty dollars. I mean, you are saying that you are paying Nigerians forty dollars in a month. Look at that. Look at it compared to other states, and look at the purchasing power there. So I think NLC they have right to say you are giving us this. You are even taking it away the other way around. That the cost of surviving, the cost of purchasing power. Let me even surprise you beyond PMS. You Nigerians spend about sixty-five to seventy percent on food consumption. So if you spend seventy percent of your salary on food consumption, how much will you spend on rent? How much will you spend on school fees? How much will you spend on uh, you know logistics and even transport to your to your offices? That's where you see that the forty dollars that we are giving is not something to reckon with. So I think uh, NMC have the right to continue to complain about well-being of their work of the workers. Well, Doctor, we must thank you for your time on the program this morning. We do well to appreciate you for taking our time to join us. Thank you for having me. Now, I'll come back to you, Comrade Richard. Uh, Doctor, mm -hmm. also uh, referred to your comments earlier on the position of the NLC. But uh, at a time like this, there are projections that uh, as we go into the Ember month, we're just in the first week of September, and this hike is there with the festivities coming in and people needing to travel more. Uh, let's not even talk about the aviation sector. Let's stay with the transportation sector in terms of our roads. How do Nigerians begin to brace themselves up for some of the festivities with the need to travel or take breaks at a time when uh, the PMS price is well above 1,000 in projections of what will happen in the coming weeks? Don't even think that um, what is happening now is just um, uh, uh, um, a prelude of what is to come. <laughs> that is what I think. Because, I mean, imagine that we are just in the uh, 4th of September. We are already having queues everywhere, you know. Don't you think that it might even get worse as we approach November, December, and all of that? So, for me, it is important that President Tinubu, I doubt if he came into power to come and cause, cause hardship to Nigeria. I don't think anybody will want to, you know, take power or uh, want to be president of the of a country, you know, to come and cause um, hardship for his people, you know. I think there must be a way out, you know. And uh, for quite some time, I've been hearing calls for the sack of um, the NMPC, GCO. GCO, you know, and all of that. Um, somehow, I'm also beginning to think in that light, you know. Let's have fresh hands, yeah, new ideas. Yeah, could it be, could it be that them, there's some people who are trying to undermine, you know, the sincere efforts of the president, you know, within the NNPC and all of that, you know. So I, I think that there is need for the president to also do, have a second thought, you know, look deeper into the issues of the NNPC, you know. We must not continue like this. Because just like um, Dr. Um, Aliu Ali. said earlier, you know, with the with what is happening now, the hike in um fuel price, every other thing, every other prices of any co the commodities of other items has immediately skyrocketed, you know. Because I mean, for the hoteliers, they use diesel and fuel, you know, to power their generators. That means the rooms, their accommodations will be will, go, will be high. Exactly. You know. Virtually everything. Virtually everything. You know. So how do people survive moving forward? Just like he said, by Monday, schools are going to reopen. People's parents will start talking about paying school fees, you know. Now, after paying school fees, as they take their kids to school, they are also required to pick them up by close of school, isn't it? We have fear situation. What if you are, key, you are going to queue for fear and you are also meant to pick your child from school and all of that? So this hardship is becoming unbearable already, you know. So Mr. President must do something immediately. Now, the president is currently in China. The 2024 summit on the Forum of China-Africa Cooperation, starting today, built to last till the 6th Friday, uh, is one in which he has also seen the president loom to strengthen bilateral ties between Nigeria and China. You remember the infamous uh, private jet incidents that happened as well it's on how much foreign help we can have at a time like this we already have the resource that would control this price 
it's on the rest of our refineries to get working much like Dangote refinery. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? I, I, I think I think that too should be even encouraged, you know, because if Dangote as a private individual can do what he has done with the Dangote refineries, why shouldn't Nigeria as a country? Why shouldn't government? You know, I know that um, government too is not supposed to be in business, you know, and all of that, but there is need for us to get other refineries working. You know, there is need for us to... By the time there is a second option, after the Dangote uh, refinery, refinery, you know, I think most of these issues we are having now, you know, would be reduced to the barest, um, the barest minimum. I, so, I share that sentiment with you. Governments might not have business in business, yeah. but do you think, much like we had an unbundling of the electricity sector, that saw an improvement, many say say hasn't gotten to where it's supposed to be. Do you think that this refinery should be probably privatized? That is my that is exactly where I'm heading to. You know, that is why I said his um current um uh, visit to China, you know, I think that all some of these things should be brought to the table. You know, of course <laughs> with the soft life we see <laughs> we see uh people living in China. You know, we can actually replicate some of these things here. You know, China, China, from what I know, you know, make things quite easy, you know, for their people, for, 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 for its um, citizens and, and all of that. You know, some of those, some of those, um, some of their technology, you know, can be of, of, can be of use to us here. You know, it is important. It is important. Especially, like I said, we must have a second third food refinery in Nigeria. The other day, I don't know what is happening with the Wari refinery. I thought the NNPC told the, G, the GMD told us the Wari refinery was going to come, come on, on, board. on board. Come on board. What is happening? You know. So these are the issues. These are the issues. Look at the fuel price, the, the hike in uh, fuel price they announced yesterday. You know. We've been hearing this rumor about I mean, the potential increase in price. And what have we been hearing? They will come, up, come, come every day to tell us, no, there's Logistic nothing like challenges. that. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. Now, there's also the question of money owed to marketers. We saw some publications saying $6 billion for fuel that had already been imported into Nigeria was consumed and they're having issues getting their money back. Still, fingers are being pointed to the NPCL. You see, the reason why, that is exactly the reason why I will continue to insist that the president takes a second look at the NNPCL. We actually need to know what is happening in that, in that, in that place. And besides, I was looking at the chart of um, uh, the heads or former heads of um, uh, NNPC, you know. I think this man has been the, the has had the highest... Um, uh, uh, the longest tenor. tenor. Yes, I had the longest tenor. He's in his second tenor. Is this in second tenor over five years, or he's going to five years, or more than five years already? You know, I, I think that that place is not meant for. It's not meant for that. You know, we need to bring somebody else. We need to bring a fresh hand to that place. Well, we must thank you for your time on the program this morning. We appreciate you.